Yum, yum. Hey everyone, Steve White here. So I thought I'd do a video showing how to use geometry nodes to set up a simple radial array with some different controls. Uh, the nice thing about geometry nodes is it's adding a lot of new functionality and flexibility to Blender that we didn't have before. So let's get started. So let's go ahead and add a plane to Blender. And it doesn't really matter what we add here. Um, this is just an object I'm using to attach the geometry nodes modifier to. So let's go into the geometry nodes workspace. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us our viewport. It's going to give us our geometry node tree. And it's also going to give us our spreadsheet. Now the spreadsheet will give us a lot of information about our geometry. So in this case, I just have a plane in the scene. Um, and we have, uh, you know, which is just one polygon, four, four points. And each of those points here is listed in the spreadsheet. It's got the index number of those points. And it's also got the location of each of those points. And indices and uh, locations are something we can use in geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and add a new geometry node tree by clicking new. And I'm going to start the basis of our radial array with a few primitives. So let me go to add, and we'll do curve primitives. I'm going to add an arc. And I'm going to go to add curve primitives. I'm going to add a circle. Now, the reason I'm adding both of these is because um, we're ultimately going to use arc uh, for a little more flexibility. However, I want to show um, you know, the problem you might come across with that and how you can how you can fix it. Um, so if I go ahead and add uh, the curve circle, you can see that uh, curve circle appears in the scene. And if I select that curve up here in the uh, spreadsheet, you can see it's going to list each of those curves points. Um, you know, it, right now it's got 32 points, 0 through 31 in the index number wise. And, you know, we can adjust that to value. You can see if I adjust this, how it's going to uh, update the uh, spreadsheet. And um, each of those points is going to be a basis for an instance. So now if I go ahead and add a instance on points and put that in there, um, now we have an input for an, an instance object. So let's go ahead and add a object to the scene. We're going to add Suzanne and I want to scale her down and then I'm going to apply the scale. So now if I come back to my plane uh, where I have the geometry node attached to and then I drag uh, Suzanne into the scene. Now I can plug Suzanne uh, geometry right into the instance. And so now we have a circular array of, of Suzanne's. Okay, and so let's scale or uh, bring down the resolution and we'll increase the uh, radius of that. Okay, so now, like I said, uh, this is gonna give us a perfect circular array. However, um, I wanna use the arc because um, it'll actually give us the ability to do half an array if we want or a quarter or anything in between. So if I plug in the uh, curve arc in there, and you can see I can adjust um, you know, how much of that uh, array goes around. Um, but the problem, here's the problem we're gonna have with this. So if I start dragging this up towards 360, if you watch that last Suzanne instance, um, as soon as we get on 360, it's going to cover that first one. And so you probably don't want to have overlapping um, geometry here uh, on a perfect 360 circle. So um, we need a way to delete um, that first index. Okay, and so um, we can do that with uh, delete geometry using an index as an input. So if I go ahead and add, uh, go under geometry, we can do a delete geometry, which is going to delete everything except for our source object. And now it's got a selection input and we're going to go to input we're going to add index and plug that into the selection. Let me drag this over here. And uh, right now, that index is just referencing one index number, which is why we're only seeing the one there. Um, but we need a way to tell it um, to delete everything below a certain index. So we can do that with a math node. So if I go to utilities, do math, I'll plug this in, and then I'm going to set the, uh, you know, the, the function here to less than. Okay, and so the default value for this is 0.5. So it's saying that delete everything less than 0.5 index. And, and that works currently because um, the one we're trying to delete is index zero. Okay, and so like you can see, if I start increasing that threshold, how it's gonna start deleting um, everything below that number. Okay, so um, if we just bring this back down to 0.5 or you know anything in between zero and one is fine. Um, now we can actually bring up that sweep to 360 and nothing's going to overlap. You can see how it's going to um, 
you know stop there and so we can bring up the uh, resolution or the uh, radius or the resolution or whatever um, but now we have a perfect circle but we also have the option of you know bringing a sweep angle down if we want all right so now that we have that let's just add a few more controls for controlling the rotation and the scale um, of each of those of instances so um, Right now, if we if we come into the instance generator, um, you can see we can um, we can affect each of those uh, you know the rotations and the scale of each of those, but that's controlling all of them at the same time. We want a way to randomize those. So if I come under uh, nodes and we add a random value, okay, I'm gonna bring this over here, and then I'm going to set instead of float, I'm going to use vector. And then I'm going to plug the vector into the rotation. Okay, so now uh, we have min zero and max one. So um, you can see we can, um, you know, randomize all the rotations of those. And we can do the same with the scale. Uh, we can just use this random value node. So I'll just hit shift D to duplicate this. And then I'm going to change this one to um, a float actually, because uh, we don't want to scale these individually or, you know, on each axis. We want to actually scale them all at once uniformly. So to do that, we want to plug in the same float value into each field. So we can just plug in a float directly into those fields and it's, that's going to do it for us. So um, you can see it's um, it's going all the way from zero to one uh, scale. So, you know, if I bring these up, you can see, uh, you know, if I bring it up to one, then there's going to be no no random scale, um, you know, and we can increase increase it more if we want. All right. So we have that. So. Um, now, we obviously have a way to randomize these, but you may still also want to be able to um, control them so that they all rotate together at once. And we can do that just by adding a few controls, like um, we go to instance, we could do a rotate um, instance, plug that in here, and then we can also do a uh, instance and do a scale instance. Okay, and so now um, we actually have um, the ability to, um, you know, scale all those together at the same time if we want, or we can do, you know, random, random scales. Um, same way with rotations, uh, we can come in here and just um, rotate them all together, or we can come in here um, in the rotation and do, um, oops, not that one, um, we can do random rotations. Okay, so now that we have, um, those are all the controls that I really want to set up for this. Um, one last thing we can do here is, um, we want to be able to control all this from the modifier. We don't want to have to keep coming into the to the node tree to adjust these values. So um, we can drag all the values that we want to adjust um, out to the group input, and that will appear over here in the modifier. So uh, I want to control the resolution, so I'll drag that in. I want to control the radius. I also want to control the sweep angle. Okay, and you can see how those appear over here. Um, and then I also want to control the max values here on the rotation and the scale. And I probably want to control, you know, each of these individually too, but I, I don't want to get too convoluted here. So, um, the one last thing I want to do is I want to, I want the ability to swap out, uh, that monkey for another object, um, easily. So you can see that when I added Susanna here, it adds an object info node and it has a picker field for the object it's referencing, which is in this case, Suzanne. So if I drag that picker field out to the input value, now I actually have a picker field that I can use to select any other object in the scene. So let's just say we add, actually, let's just go back out to the uh, layout tab. So we don't even have to go in, into the geometry node tree anymore. And if I select my array, and we can hide Suzanne if we want. We don't need to see the uh, the uh, base object. And then now I have all the controls I need here in the modifier. And so I can you know set my you know sweep value. I can set my max you know on my scales and rotations. And then if I want to, I can swap swap out another item. So let's just say I add um, I don't know, a torus, and then I'll scale that down, apply the scale. And now if I could just pick the Taurus, now I have that array of Tauruses. So uh, yeah, so that's a easy way to set up a simple array, um, you know, and you can use this on um, any object that you want. Yum, yum.